Okay, so let's talk about modeling a car. <clears throat> so to get the orthographic reference images in there, just refer back to the last video where I go over how to set this up. Um, setting up the orthographic reference images, as you'll see here in this demonstration, is really important to getting the scene right because basically as I model, I'm going to be tracing the images a whole lot as I work here using the orthographic um, or orthographic views. So to start off, I'm just going to make sure that I have the modeling toolkit over here to the right. So click that tab to get the modeling toolkit. And additionally, I'm going to use the mesh tools some. There's a couple new tools that I'm going to introduce here that'll be under this mesh tools window. So I'm just going to break off this menu by clicking the double dotted line on mesh tools and then just dragging it over to the side. And you can tell in the future if I'm clicking something here and you forget for a moment which window that that falls under, just take a look at this tab right here where it says mesh tools and whenever you see a break off menu it's going to be one of these up here. So, and I'll get into kind of some of those tools here in a moment. So, to start off, one thing I just want to introduce, and this isn't going to be modeling the car, but just an important concept to understand here, is when modeling, I'm just going to set up a basic box here. When modeling complex objects, much of the time, let's just imagine that I've done some complex modeling here with some extrusions and some fun complicated things here, is I like to work on the right side of the model here. So that side right there. And then mirror it over to the other side. And so what I'll do is I'll have those sides of the model deleted the whole time and I'll just model on the right side. And it's important to model on the right side. I mean, you can model on the left side of mirror over to the right, but um, it's just a little bit easier if you do it on uh, model on the right side here. And I'll show that in just a moment. And so I make sure that the center of the object is centered along that that axis there. And it's really important to center it along that axis. And so that's why it was so important when I was setting up the orthographic images that the top and then the front and the back were centered around down that line so that when we trace, we can just mirror over to the other side. And so the technique here, it's really simple. So I just right click and make sure I'm in the objects mode. And I have all the faces on the left side deleted and I just press this mirror button that's right here. So there's this mirror button, or I can go under mesh and then mirror, and you can find it there as well. And I press mirror, and then it just brings the, the, the object back. So you can do some complex modeling here, but you only need to do it on one side, then you just press the mirror button and you're done, you know? So one little tip here when working this way, is a when you delete half the faces just make sure that you're deleting the right faces a lot of times i think it can be helpful to kind of select it from this view because you can really tell exactly where that access is happening and then you can kind of delete them out additionally sometimes when you're modeling on one side you might just drag one of these vertices by mistake You know, let's just say that this gets messed up a little bit. And you kind of lose your that, that symmetry line. So the way to fix that is I'll right click and go to vertex mode. Then I'll generally kind of look at it from the top view. Depends on your model though. And I'll drag all the vert and select all the vertices that I want to be snapped to that center point again and make sure to only select those vertices so don't select don't shift and select one of these by mistake or something so just all the vertices that you want to be in the center and then 
up here um, with the XYZ areas. And again, you can find that tab. It, it might not show up for you, and it's the tab that's right next to the render icons. And under the X, if I type zero and then return, it'll punch them to the, the zero point here. So zero, that'll let me do it. And then return, and it punches it right to the zero there. So now, when I go and press this mirror button right here, it'll mirror again. And so that's a, that's a big part of the concept here as we work. Something else you can do is instead of mirroring the geometry, a lot of times you'll need to mirror the geometry. So just be ready to understand and be able to use that and utilize that technique. Um, but a lot of times you can also turn symmetry on. I prefer to mirror because the symmetry can get sloppy a lot of the time if you kind of make any like tiny error. Um, so just keep that in mind. But the symmetry is here and you just You'll want to do object X, which is the first option there, if you decide to use it. And then when you have symmetry on, when you move one side, it'll move the other. And also, if you extrude on one side or add edge loops, it'll also do it on both sides there. Um, one problem with this is sometimes I'll forget that that's on. And what we all do, like that'll happen a lot. And so you'll be working on a project later and it won't be working and it might take a minute to figure out. Oh, right, symmetry was on, and that's why nothing was working. So that's another reason why I tend not to use that. But it's there if you want it. So, um, oh yeah, one other thing I want to show here is I want to introduce one of the tools that will be coming up. So, when you add an edge loop in Maya, most of, a lot of the time, I think the technique that I've shown to date is the multi-cut tool. So the multi-cut tool is the tool where you can kind of draw in geometry manually onto your mesh and then press return. And you can kind of draw it in line by line. Or if you hold down control on your keyboard, it'll give you the option to do an edge loop here. And it always goes perpendicular of where you placed it. You can see here, and you just click and let go, and it adds an edge loop. And again, that's the multi-cut tool. Sorry, I just pressed the two on my keyboard by mistake there. So um, it adds an edge loop, and you can see here that this line right there that I've selected remained unchanged while I added that edge loop. And so, yeah, that, that's a helpful tool. But let's say that I want this to be a rounded edge right here, so I want it to be kind of like smooth and rounded off, which happens a lot, particularly with uh, character modeling. This is really important, is instead I'll use the insert edge loop tool, but the insert edge loop tool, by default, when I do it, and with the insert edge loop tool, you just click it, and then you drag on the edge. If you drag in the center of the object, it won't work. But if you drag on an edge, it'll add an edge loop. You can see by default, it does the exact same thing as the multi-cut tool did. But what I do is in the insert edge loop tool, I'll press the options box to get this options window and then turn on insert with edge flow. So I make sure that that's selected. And when I do an edge loop now, hold on one sec. Oops, <laughs> that, uh, that went a little crazy on me there. But um, so there's something kind of going on with my model right now. Let me see if I can work out why that's going on. Oops. So let's just um, work with a flat piece of geometry to show this. So I don't know what was going on with my model just then, but if I, hmm, yeah, okay. Why are giving me a real hard time today? Let me just start from scratch real quick here.
Okay. Um, this is going a little longer than I was hoping on this demonstration. But... So, oh, you know what? I have, I have a better idea. This is going painfully slow, sorry. Um, okay, so I'm going to just use a more circular object here. And so, to kind of just demonstrate again, the multi cut tool, if I hold control, we'll do that. And then the edge loop, that edge remains unchanged right there. And then with the insert edge loop tool, let me just make sure that it's on. Okay. So with the insert edge loop tool, with the edge flow enabled, when I add an edge loop, you see it rounds it off right there. So that can be just a really helpful tool there. So, and that's particularly helpful with character modeling. I have no idea why it was kind of giving me so much trouble just then. So additionally, we have the slide edge tool, which is another tool I'll use. So sometimes if you have a lot of geometry in here, um, let's see here, so I'll just add some more edge loops. And I want to kind of even out the topology here. I can right click and select edge and then double click slide edge tool. So if I double click slide edge tool, this will come up where it says drag with middle mouse button to slide. And so what this does is it enables me to move that edge around um, while still respecting the shape of the model here. And so with the slide edge tool selected, I'll drag, but you'll see it kind of still stays along the model there. And so this is a really helpful tool for evening out your geometry. It kind of snaps into place, so it can be a little annoying to use sometimes, but it's just really helpful for evening out your geometry here while keeping the model shape. So normally, before that tool existed, you would have to just kind of grab vertices and then just be really carefully moving them. But you can see it's changing the shape of the model whenever I move it around here. And kind of changing the topology could be a pretty big pain. So the slide edge tool, again, just double click and then it's the middle mouse button that you have to click in order to use it. It's just a helpful way to kind of slide some edges around without fundamentally changing the shape of your model. So those are kind of two of the new tools I want to introduce. And there's another important tool here that's going to come up here soon. So to start modeling this car, I'm going to start by going to Create, Polygon Primitives, and then Pipe. So we're going to create a pipe. So again, let's Create, Polygon Primitives, and then Find Pipe. And so from here, I press F to focus in on it, and then R to scale it up just a little bit. And so the very first thing I want to do is I want to go to the Attribute Editor, and then under, under Poly Pipe 1, which is the third tab, I want to change the subdivision axis from 20 to, I believe it'll be 12. I kind of want to start with as little geometry as possible. Two of the guiding principles I would say for modeling complex models in Maya is use your reference images, make sure your reference images are well set up and trust them at that point. And secondly, to, is to work with as few polygons as you can for as long as you can. So don't start off with 100 polygons and try to work with it because it's just going to give you a headache and it probably won't turn out well. So I kind of keep the subdivision axis at 12 to start off. And what this is going to be, just kind of zooming in on our reference image, is we're going to model the body of the car as if it was paper, sort of. And I'm going to start by modeling this little section where my cursor is going outside of the wheelbase right there. And so that's going to be the first area that I model, and then I'm going to build out the car from that point and the wheels will model separately here. And so that's kind of the plan. And so to start off, I'm going to press E on this for rotate. Then again, if you hold down J and then you rotate, it'll snap it to 90 degrees right there. 
And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go to the top view. And again, I just did that by I was in the perspective view and I just press spacebar, put my cursor over the top view, press spacebar again. You can navigate around these orthographic views by holding down option on your keyboard and pressing your middle mouse button. And then holding down your right mouse button, dragging from left to right to zoom in, dragging right to left to zoom out. And so I'm going to right click and go to face. And I'm just going to drag and select this to delete all the faces on the left and in the center there and just press delete. And so say we have like a sliver of paper left here. And so that's the way we're going to model this is we're going to extrude out edges and kind of break, bring it out into the object. And so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to place it in the top view to go approximately over the wheelbase. And it's okay that the anchor point's a little off there. And then I'm going to go to the side view here. As long as your anchor points in the center on the side view, you'll be okay. Um, so I'm going to scale this up a bit. So you can see, I can see the model and I can see the reference drawing, but I want to be able to see the reference drawing through the model. So to do that, depending on which panel you're looking at, just go to shading and then x-ray. You see that it added an x-ray view to the side view, but my other views are still normal. Um, Let's see here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to center this up on the center of my hubcap because I know that the wheel well is going to radiate out from that point, most likely. And now I'm going to right click and go to edge mode. And I'm just going to, I'm going to scale up this edge loop and then I'm going to scale down that edge loop to kind of match that wheel well out, out there. So I'm going to double click to get that edge loop. And then I'll scale it up until it lines up with that inner wheel well area. And then I'll select this edge loop by shift and double clicking. And then scale that down to where that traces that outer wheel well. And so let me just turn off x-ray for a second. You can kind of see, hopefully, where that model is kind of outlining right now. And you can see the wheel right now is untouched at this point. The wheel is going to be its own completely own, you know, issue here. And I'm just going to look at this from the front view. So again, I just press spacebar and then spacebar again to bring it to the front view. And I'm going to line it up there. So spacebar. And then hold it over my perspective view to press space, kind of punch into that. So you have something that looks something like this. So going back to the side view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and go to face mode. And I'm going to drag and select these bottom four faces. We don't really need them, so I'm going to delete them out. So it's one, two, three, four down there. So delete those faces. I'm going to move this back to x-ray again. So shading and then x-ray in the view. And from here, I look at this edge right here, and looking at the drawing, that's not what's happening. So the drawing is flat. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to right-click, go to vertex mode. So just right there. Drag and select these two vertices. Press R on my keyboard for scale, or press this button right here. And then I'm just going to do a vertical scale to flatten them out. So a vertical scale will kind of snap things flat along an axis. I'm going to press W and then just kind of push it back down a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So just drag and select two vertices, press R on your keyboard, and then scale them vertically to snap them into that vertical axis there. And you'll kind of feel it lock while you're using Maya there. And again, just double drag and select them both again, press W, and then just move them down a bit. And so. We're pretty much ready to begin here. So before I do that, I'm just going to call this wheel one in the outliner. So just rename it. And in the outliner with it selected, if you press Command D on a Mac, that'll duplicate it. 
can see here, so we've got a duplicate. You can also go to Edit, Duplicate, and I'll do it there. So we have Wheel 2. What I'm going to do is just with Wheel 2 selected, I'm just going to press W, and I'm just going to quickly drag it to the back there, just so we have it for a later, you know, later date. I might just scale it up just so it matches a little bit with that rear wheel. But we're not going to really mess with it much. It's just this This is a good moment, a good opportunity to duplicate it so we don't have to create it from scratch again when that comes up. So we're going to build this model out, emanating out from this point. And I'm just going to look at the paneling and help use that to help me make the decisions of which edge loops I need to add. So looking at this panel right here where my cursor is, you can see there's already an edge connecting to that, which is great. There's a panel down here we want to create, so I'll need a, an edge loop there. And then I can see I need to do an edge loop here as well, just to plan ahead for this panel right there. So I'm going to use the Insert Edge Loop tool, and I'm going to use that instead of the Multi-Cut tool because I want this to round out when I create the edge loops. So again, this is under the Mesh Tools menu, which is the menu I broke out before. So it's this menu right here, and I broke it out just by clicking that double dotted line and I'll do the insert sorry the insert edge loop tool almost did the offset edge loop tool the insert edge loop tool so I'll just click that and then I'll just drag it onto an edge and watch what happens when I let go you see it kind of adds some curve to that line and so that's just an example of why I like the the edge loop tool the insert edge loop tool with the edge flow option enabled because it just kind of saves just that little bit of work there. Um, so I added an edge loop to kind of match this panel here along this wheel well. Then I'm going to do one down here as well to kind of prepare for the step coming up. So just like that I'm going to do insert edge loop again and just click it right there and we're good. So now it's time to <clears throat> get started. So Extruding, I should say. So I'll right click and go to edge mode. We're gonna extract we're gonna extrude edges. And so to start off, I'm gonna extrude this bottom panel right here. And so I'm gonna select this edge and that edge, and then press extrude. And you can see here when I go to extrude, by default in Maya, it wants to extrude out that way. Kind of along it's called extruding locally which means that locally that edge is facing kind of down by 30 degrees or so there. And that's not what we want here. So instead, I'll just press extrude again. And it's this power button up here to the upper right with normally it's in local mode. And if you want to switch it to world mode, you just press it. And you'll see that line switch to horizontal rather than vertical. And now when I extrude it, if I look at it in the perspective view, if I, I can ext extrude directly along the um, X, Y, and Z axis there. And then I'll press the power button again to bring it back to the default. And you can see that it just extra and by default there where the arrows, the power button's moving up, up here, it, it'll, it would extrude out along the axis there. So I'm gonna, again, just move it to the world mode. Go back to my front view. And now when I extrude it, it just goes right along the line. And so I'll drag it out to this point where the top of it is hitting that area right there. You don't need to get it perfect because we're going to adjust it here in the next step. Once you're done extruding, press Q on your keyboard to get out of extrude mode. You see how the extrude settings went away. And now I'll right click, go to vertex, and then I'll just press W with these two vertices selected and then drag them out to here so that it matches the drawing. And so the way that I work here is whenever I make an extrusion, I kind of do it first looking through one orthographic view. And then if you look at it in the perspective view, it's just like a flat thing right now. And so I need to check it in another view. And so the second view I'm going to check it in is the, I think the front view will be good for this one. So those two vertices are still selected there. If I drag them over, let me just double check my work there. Yeah, so if I drag them over, then I'll just, oh, I didn't have x-ray turned on. Um, 
I dragged them over to the left, and you can see that it's tracing the drawing here in that left view, or sorry, the front view. And so now I need to just go up and select this vertice right here, which again in the side view was right there. And if we look in the front view, if we look in the front view, you can see that I need to drag it to the left to bring it to that point. And so now, just by using those two orthographic views in concert together, you can see that I was able to kind of start to get the shape of that paneling right there. So, and that's kind of at the heart of the process here coming up. The next thing I want to do is I can see looking at this wheel well from the front that these vertices, or sorry, the faces that we made at the beginning here, so those faces right there, they're flat. But looking at the front view, you can see looking at this line right here, there's actually a bit of a curve to it. So I'm just going to shape these one by one. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use, and again, I just kind of drag the top view out of the way a little bit in the, in the top just by grabbing this dotted edge right there and just dragging. And I'm going to want the top view later, but I just kind of wanted it out of the way some. So I want to give some curve to this shape right there that I have selected. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to right click and go to vertex mode, drag and select those vertices right there in the perspective view, and then check in the front view and just drag them until they trace the drawing. I'm going to go one by one here. Notice that I'm making the selections in the perspective view and then dragging in the orthographic view, and that's a common practice of mine when modeling. And the reason for that is, if you look in this front view, if I drag and select like that, it looks like I grabbed the front vertices of the well there. Um, <laughs> in that time it works of course. Um, let's try this again for up here. Um, it, see up here it looks like I just grabbed the front vertices there but in reality I grabbed the front and the back at the same time. And so I like to just make the selection in the perspective view because it's easier to tell what you're selecting there. But then I use the orthographic view to kind of line it up because the orthographic view is, you know, I, I know it's not, it's not, uh, messing with me there. The orthographic view usually, if you line it up right, it's not going to lie. Whereas the perspective view can tr trick your eyes <clears throat> pretty frequently. So I'm just kind of going through, selecting in the perspective view, and then making the adjustments in the, the ortho front view. And I'm going to do that for the back as well. I think it's going to have a little bit of a different curve, although I'm going to have to use my imagination just a little bit here. Here I can make the selections in the orthographic view. Okay. So I just added, looking in the perspective view, oops, looking in the perspective view, you can see I just added like a little bit of curvature to that wheel well, just to give it a little bit of life and zest there. So next up, I'm going to kind of return to the step that I was doing before where I was extruding out those, those edges right there, but I'm going to do it up here for these edges. And I'm about to demonstrate um, a really, really important new technique here. So to start off, I'm going to look at my side view and I'm going to right click and go to edge mode. I'm going to shift and select these two edges right here. And I'm going to extrude them out to make this panel right here where my cursor is. So just press extrude. I'm going to change it to world mode by pressing the power button right there and extruding it out. And I'm just going to drag it up a little bit because when I was extruding it before, you see how it's going along that line here? I'm going to want, I'm going to, want to separate that off just a little bit. And I'm not going to get it perfect at all. I'm just going to extrude it out in that direction. Press Q to get out of extrude mode. 
Then I'm going to right click and go to vertex mode and then shape these vertices one by one. So I'll drag and select this vertice so that it's in that corner right there. And then this vertice right here until it's there. And so looking at this, you can see that I have a panel up here in the top and then a separate panel down here and I might want to connect them. So the way to connect them is right click and be in ver vertex mode. Select this vertex right here that you want to move and I'm going to snap it to that vertice right there and then I'm going to merge them together. And so the way to snap them together is make sure you're in move mode right here. Um, and then hold down V as in vampire and you'll see a little circle come around it. And if you just drag it, it'll snap into the same spot as that vertice right there. So just hold down V as in vampire and snap it and it'll snap into place. So that's step one of the process and there's two steps. So the reason there's two steps is if I just do like a little tap here and drag out, you can see these these two aren't really, the, the two vertices got snapped to the same position, but they didn't merge into one vertice. There's still two vertices taking up the same space and we want them to be merged together. So what you want to do is you want to grab the vertice that you want to move into the other vertices position, get it into move mode by pressing W, and then you snap it by pressing V as in vampire, snap it into that position, and then you'll want to drag and select. So drag and select like this to drag and make sure both of them are selected. Do not just do like a click like that to select them. Do like a drag and select to make sure both vertices are selected. And then up here, there's this button right here where my cursor is, which is the merge button. You can also find the merge button under edit mesh and merge. And when you do that, it'll merge the two vertices together. So edit mesh and merge. And when they're merged, this distance threshold menu will kind of come up and that just kind of lets you know that it, that it worked. And if you ever want to double check just to make sure that things got merged correctly, you can just click instead of doing the drag and select, just do a click on the vertice and press W. And if it moves as one mesh, then you got it. And so what I did is that just to kind of step back here, is just kind of reviewing the steps that I just did as I right click went to edge mode selected that edge and that edge we're doing a shift and select extrude make sure that it's in world mode extruded them out dragged it up a little didn't get it perfect at all right click and go to vertex mode now just position the vertices one by one so the top one first the middle one second and then the third one, I selected it, and then pressed V as in vampire, snapped it to that bottom point that I wanted to connect it to, then do a drag select there, and then press the merge vertices button right here. And then that distance threshold shows up when it's merged. Then from there, I'll just make a couple of fine tune adjustments. And so I did this from the side view, but I imagine I'll probably need to do this from the front view as well. Looking at the perspective view, you can see this is kind of disconnected. So I need to do this. I need to line these up in the front view. And so with this vertice that I have, the, my top vertice selected right here, I can tell it wants to go to that point on the front of the car. And so looking at the front view, I'll just drag it, just only using that, that right red yellow arrow. Move that there. Now I'm going to go to the middle one. Going to switch entirely to the front view here. And we have that part of the car finished. So you can see here we're starting to kind of get some panel in here. So what I'm gonna I'm gonna continue showing this demonstration, but those are the main techniques shown. And so I'll just kind of continue to further demonstrate how I might personally go about this here. So there's no set order that we have to do this. You just kind of build out the car as it's comfortable to you and as it makes sense, or, you know, the vehicle. And for me, the next panel I want to work on is this panel right here where my cursor is. So I'll right click, go to edge mode, 
select this edge, extrude, and make sure I'm in world mode. Try to get forward. So I did that from the side view. I'll need to check that from the front and maybe even the top view here. So you can see it only dragged forward. I'm just going to press W to bring it into move mode here, get out of the extrude mode. And I'll drag it to here. So it's tracing it in the front view. And now, I might also want to just check real quick in the top view. It's a little hard to tell in the top view if that's right. I can see the hood of the car might be a little different. I might want this out just a little bit. So I'm going to drag it forward some. I'm kind of using all the all the views I have available to me to kind of make the necessary adjustments. So I'm, I'm going to select these two vertices and just pull them forward. I'm just kind of using my eye here in combination with the model. Okay. So I kind of extruded out that face. Let me change this to X-ray in the side view. Hmm. Yeah, I had a moment there where I just overthought some things. I'm just gonna pull that back. And you know, sometimes you'll kind of make a decision and change your mind here. And when that happens, I just recommend going back to your side view and kind of get it working there. And then from there, I'll check my, my front view. That looks good. And amongst these for this panel, you know, this panel kind of runs along the side and the front. So due to that, the top view is kind of the view I should trust the least. And I just kind of found that out there while I was working. So sometimes you kind of make discoveries like that. Okay, so next up, let me look at this from the side view. Oops. So next up, I'm gonna try to work on this panel that's happening right here, I think. And so I can see here that there's this paneling line that happens right here. So I wanna make an edge loop there to connect with it. So I'll go to the insert edge loop tool under mesh tools. So insert edge loop and just drag and select here and it'll round out the wheel well a little bit when I add it right there. I can see I still want to just make a small adjustment to this just to kind of keep the width consistent of this of these lines but also just to respect the drawing you know that I have here. I'm kind of trusting the drawing. So we'll have a panel for that one. Then there's a panel here. So same thing over on this side, or similar thing over on this side. So insert edge loop, drag select there, press the W button just to move it around a little, line it up with that edge. And so now I'm going to use some of the similar techniques that we've used before. So I'm just going to move this to out of x-ray mode so you hopefully you can see a little better. You know what I'm going to do here? You, so you don't need to follow what I'm doing. I'm going to, well, first I'm going to save my scene. You should probably save your scene if you haven't yet, just to make sure you don't lose your work. Um, but I'm going to just go into the attribute editor, or sorry, go into the... Um, the layer editor. And I'm just going to take the visibility of the alpha gain slider down a little bit on the side view. So hopefully y'all can kind of see what I'm working on a little bit better here or have the model stand out a little bit better. And I might do that for the front view as well. So this will hopefully make the demo easier to follow. And so under the Later editor, I'll press the this button twice to lock it, so R. So now I can't select the orthographic images. So hopefully now you can kind of see this a little bit better. So the work we've done so far is kind of this front area right here. You can see that it's kind of 
tracing the model there and I'll kind of move back to the front. I just kind of, I like to work in shifts here on some of this stuff. And so I'm gonna right click, go to edge mode and I'm gonna start with these three edges and I will extrude them out. So I'm gonna do the modeling toolkit extrude. I'll move that to the world mode rather than local. And I just extrude it out roughly just to get it started there. You know, not getting a lot done there. But I'm gonna press W and move this out. And I'll need to turn on X-ray here so I can see I'm trying to find that line right there. So shading X-ray. If you recall, I want this vertice to be right there. So I'll press W to move and then V as in vampire to snap it right there. Then drag and select and merge vertices. So now they're one. So I connected that. And that looks pretty good. Try with this vertice right here. Don't drag it too far in any one direction. We want to kind of keep the edge flow going as best as possible here. So I think unless something changes here as we model down the road, I think somewhere like that will be good. And now I just want to check this from, uh, let's say I'm going to toggle between the front and the perspective view. So this vertice right here, you can see looking at the front view, so it's, or the side view, I place that vertice right here. But if you look in the front view, it's way over to the right. And if you look at the drawing, it's supposed to be right over here, ideally. So if you just drag it over, and I'm getting just only using that right left slider to push it over, you can kind of get a sense of which line we we're meant to follow here. So the front view is going to be really helpful here. So I'm just going to move up to the next vertice up here and the perspective view, select it, go into the front view, drag it till it traces that panel. And we're going to do that, just repeat those steps. So the top vertice up there, I'm going to select it in the perspective view, go back to the front view, and again I'm just dragging left to right because I already know that in the, I guess the X and the Y axis is lined up, but the, um, just needed to line it up this way. Okay, so you can see these panels are still continuing to kind of come into fruition here, so I'm going to work on some of these other panels over here. I like to start in the side view for the section. So I'm going to right click, go to edge. There's these two panels I want to extrude out now. So I'll press extrude, go to world mode, just drag them out a little bit. Right click, go to vertex, and just move it using the side view into position. I'm going to extrude out to get this panel out here down the road. And then if you recall, W and then V as in Vampire, snap it to that point, drag and select, merge them together. And so now I need to place these two vertices, I would reckon. You can see that they're kind of flat while everything else is kind of pushed over. And so the front view is kind of becoming that useful to me now because I'm kind of moving past the, the top point of that wheel well. But the top view is useful. So this is where it's useful to have a top and a front. You see how the, the front was really useful to me there for a minute, and now the top view has become more useful as I move into the center of the car. And so I can just kind of trace those panel lines and get those points. And just, yeah, trust your, your orthographic reference drawing and um, or photograph. And with a car like this, especially on this detail like this, it's just really helpful to kind of respect and trace the panel lines as you work. So next up, I'm gonna worry about this little panel right here where the wheel well kind of connects back to the door. So I can see I need an edge loop right there. So under the mesh tools, I'll do insert edge loop. Drag and select there. Press Q to get out of um, insert edge loop. Right click edge. I'm going to select these three edges, holding down shift. And then I'll press extrude. And then move it to world mode. And I'll kind of intentionally drag it wrong. 
just to kind of get it out of the way. Press Q to get out of Extrude. And I'm just going to move these vertices into place one by one. So first off, I'll do this one. Press W to get it to move. But then I'll need to snap it to that vertice right there. So I'll just hold on V, snap it, drag and select, and merge them together. And I'm just going to trace the panel lines in the side view. And then I'll need to check it. Once I have it in the side view, check it in. Oops. Um, in the top view. And so just then I saw that these lines were a little crooked right there. And so you can just drag and select and then scale it vertically and I'll snap them into a horizontal position right there. And this looks okay. And I'll need to just check that from the, which view do I want to check that from? This will get a little trickier because we're starting, things are starting to get hidden from me here. But it's, you can tell these edges that I have selected here, they're flat on the wheel well, but in the car, they're probably going to be going to the, to our right, right here a bit. So the question is how much? You can also just select the vertices, you know, so shift one, two, three, the vertices and Just trying to see if I can figure out where on the model this would probably go. So I think for the top vertices, something like that. But then the lower two, looking in the perspective view. Again, I just scaled them to flatten them out right here in the top view. Yeah, so I just check it from every view. So it looks good in the side view. The top view, it's hard to tell, but I think it's coming together in the top view. Hard to check on that, it's hard to see in the front view. So on that one, we're just gonna have to trust our eyes a little bit. And I think when I look at it in the perspective view, that looks okay to me. So, you know, we can't trace everything all the time. Sometimes we have to kind of make our own decisions. So from here, I'm going to continue to work. And I like kind of building out of this side view. And so I might build this panel out next. And so I'm going to right click, go to edge. This is repeating the same, the same steps many times here. Press Q to get out of that. So I'm trying to get that vertice lined up there, and this vertice, this is going to be interesting. I'm going to leave it here for now in the side view. So this is a tricky one. Let's see here. I'm going to select that edge. I'm looking at it in the front view. So is the area, is the paneling in front of the side view mirror on the front of the car? Very tough to tell where that should go. But I think it's right there. You just have to see. Oh, I think I get it now. Okay. So this panel right here, so I had to just kind of think about that as I was working some here. So this panel right here, if we look at this face, so I'm worrying about this face right here in the side view and kind of tracing it up in the side view. And then the top view is the view 
but this is going to be most helpful. Kind of narrows out from the side view here. But then from the top view, I'll turn off x-ray for a moment. You can see here that that face right there and the top view is right there. So we kind of need to move this vertice and that vertice kind of into the left there. And it's going to become, I, I say now, it, it panels out into this panel right here. So when we build out that panel, it'll connect out to that point. So that makes sense to me. Um, so kind of continuing to build things out. I might continue on that thought here for a moment. Mm, I'm going to give myself a break from that moment because I just <laughs> thought of that. Um, so let's just continue to build out the car in this direction here towards the door. So I'll start from the side view, and we'll kind of return to that in a minute. So I'm going to right-click, go to Edge, and then I'm going to extrude out this edge because it becomes this kind of base area right there. So I'll extrude, move it to World View by pressing the Power button, drag the blue arrow, and I'm going to bring it out to... I'll drag it out to here for now. And press Q, right click, go to vertex. All we need to do, all we need to do is drag that vertex up a little bit. And I need to add some geometry here. So I'm going to use the multi cut tool here. So press multi cut and press control on your keyboard. I'm just adding that geometry there because I want to finish that edge loop down there. So I use the multi cut tool to add this edge right there. And I can tell that I made I've made that new vertex right there. And I need to just snap it onto the existing vertice back here. So I'll press W to move it. And then if I hold down V and just click it right there, it'll snap right into place. Then drag and select, merge them together. I'm going to select this vertice now, and I can tell I need to just move that in some. I might use the top view. Mm, never mind. <laughs> I'll use my eyes here just to get that into position. So this is kind of how you continue to build out the car. And it's just, you know, it's a bit of work, but it's, I don't know. It's pretty fun, I feel like. It's not too bad. Um, so I'm going to build out this door now. So I'll right click, get an edge. I'll then shift and select all of those. Extrude, power button, drag it out. And then, same thing as before, press Q, right click vertex. Again, this, the reason I'm kind of running through these quick is it's the exact same thing every single time that I'm doing. I'm just finding the edges I want to extrude, extruding them out, pressing Q to kind of get out of extrude. And I drag some vertices from the side view. I like to start from the side view, particularly for this area of the car. And then I want to connect this vertice to that one. So I'll just hold down V, snap them, drag and select merge them by pressing that button. So it starts to get really quick, you know, once you've done it a few times. So looking at this, Okay, so the two views that concern me now, well, so this vertice right here, you can tell is right above the handle and the car door bevels in towards the driver right there. So 
looking at this, I think it should go right there from the top, looking at the top view. So it should be there just about. Press F to frame up whatever you have selected, and then when you toggle around it, it'll line up. Okay, so now I'm going to worry about the top of this car door. So I'll select that edge, press extrude. I like to extrude out of world mode here, as you can tell. For this, press Q, right click, vertex. Hold on V, I'm going to snap it to that point right there. And then, getting lost here, merge it together. So those are merged. I'm going to line this up from the side view, check it from the top view now, and I know that it's supposed to come all the way over there. Oops. So it's lined up perfectly from the side view, but it's a little off from the top view. It's hard to know which one to trust. Sometimes it's good just to average the two or find which between the top and the side, which one you trust more. I tend to trust the side view a little bit more right now, but. So now we have the car door blocked in. And what we're doing right now is we're blocking it in. You see, I'm not adding a ton of detail here. That's gonna come later. I'm just blocking in the shapes right now. And we'll connect them up later as we work here. So I'm going to just kind of continue working on this paneling a little bit further here. You know what? Let's move over to the, to the front. So I like to just kind of keep moving around the car. If I find myself starting to get my, my brain starting to kind of slow down or get a little tired thinking about one area, I'll just kind of move it right, right over to another and just kind of keep, keep things moving, keep myself from getting stuck. This really is just a little bit of a jigsaw we're doing. So next up, I'm gonna look at the front view. I'm gonna start building out some of this paneling in the hood of the car. So, to start things off, Got angle about it because I can tell I'm going to extrude this up this way. So I'm going to select this edge, extrude. Again, always do, I'm always doing the the world extrude for this particular model. So looking at it from the side view, you can tell this is supposed to come back in up this way. You kind of see what I'm doing here? So it's just checking it from all views. So from the perspective view right there, that's kind of what's happening. From the front view, it's kind of tracing that line, but then I kind of caught it in the side view that um, that light, it kind of creates this shape right here. So I build that out and just check the top view and see what's going on up there. Okay.
So now, it's very deliberate here, you know? It's just, I don't extrude something unless I'm dead sure that I've got it, you know, dead to rights here. So I've got this edge right here, and that's going to become part of the hood area right here. So I'm going to start that off. So I'm just going to extrude, move it to world, and drag it. It's almost going to immediately snap right into place here. Really going to need to move any vertices at all. Q, right click vertices, just make some minor adjustment. And so that's it from the front view. But now I need to, oops, drag and select both of those vertices in the perspective view, and then line them up in the side view. And notice that I didn't grab it like this and move it around from the center point. Because I know I already lined this up. I know for a fact these are already lined up in the um, front view. So instead of adding a lot of variables, I know I just this. I know these whichever way they need to just move front and back. So I'm only grabbing the front and back slider, and it's just dragging them until they kind of fit into place. And if your orthographic views are lined up well, this that's always going to work for you um, if you work that way. here, I'm going to select this edge, and I'm going to extrude it up, and I'm going to start worrying about this part of the hood of the car, perhaps. Let's see. Hmm. You know what? Let's move back to the front. Sorry. I'm all over the place here today. So, select this edge, and I'm going to extrude it to the center here. So extrude, world, bring it to the center. And here, if you recall, I'll press Q, drag and select these vert vertices, and then I'm going to scale them that way so that they lock into place. Then I'll select both of these vertices, and then under X up here in the top, and again, it's this tab right here, if you type 0 and return, oh, whoops, let's see. Oh. Um, is that the vertice? Let's see. <laughs> no. Trying to snap them to the center. A normal technique just went. I don't know why it went crazy on me there, but it now it's working. Is <laughs> I dragged and select both of these vertices under this X value, type 0 and enter, and then it snaps it to this center point. And so now, just to kind of give you a preview of things to come, now that I have something running along the center there, I had to bring something to the center before I could show this to you, is now, and just imagine that we built out more of this model, if we press this mirror button right here, so this mirror button right here, You know, you can build out a lot of car this way. So it's nice to kind of build something up to the center. You can kind of get that feeling of accomplishment when you extrude it over and then all of a sudden you got twice as much done, you know. Um, so let's continue to figure out what to do here. I have a pretty clear idea of how this light comes in, so I'm going to work on that. Because again, I like to only work on the areas where I just feel very confident that I'm about to move in the right direction. So I'm going to extrude this light in. Press Q. Right click vertex. And I'll check that from the side view. And again, I already, I already positioned it on um, every axis, axis except for one. So all I need to do is drag one axis at that point before I know I've got it. I'm going to get these two now. You know what I could have done? Let's see here. Eh, too late. That's fine. 
Um, could have done something to save a little time there. That's okay. Oops. Right click vertex, press W, and then on V as in vampire, snap it to that point, drag and select, merge them together. Getting it from the front view for now. And then I'm going to look at it from the side view. I think it looks something, it should look something like this. I want to make sure these two are level. So I'm just going to press the scale button and just drag them like that. I'm kind of continuing to build in this inner bevel right there. So I just dragged out these two edges at the same time here just to save myself a little work so I don't have to keep stitching everything together here. But W, V, snap that into place, drag those, merge them. So I'm lining it up from the front view first. And so when I line it up in the front view, I have the Y and the X axis lined up. So once I have it lined up here, all I have to worry about is the Z axis, hypothetically, assuming that I get it right. Here, I'm going to extrude out this edge so that I can kind of knock out a few birds with one stone here down the road. So I'm going to extrude out this edge and start getting the, the hood of the car right there. So extrude, make sure that again I, I'm, I'm in world mode, drag that up. And again, I'm just wearing it about one panel at a time. So I'm going to switch it from the front view. And then from here, I'm going to need to check it, I bet, from the top and the side. So I'm going to check the, the top view first. Um, I can see here that I've kind of gotten a little stray on some of this because just looking at this, the hood of the car is there. I'm like a little jumbled right now. Um, so with this entire front section of the car, I think in order to line up with the front view, it needed to be a little more like this, just by a touch. And maybe this needs to be up. I'm not used to having to second guess myself this much in this stage. Um, yeah, definitely got something wrong there. Um, oh, I see, okay, yep made an incorrect assumption. So we're going to have to edit undo. You can see here that I didn't account for this section jutting forward before coming back out again. So I'm glad I caught that when I did. Okay. All right, I think I get this now. So, you know, this is very Rubik's cubey. So I'm going to, again, extrude this edge. I think I had the right idea there to extrude out that edge. So I'm going to line it up in the front view and line it up like that. But then this is going to need to come forward, kind of like that. Tricky car. All right. Very tricky car. All right. 
So what I need to do is look at an Aventador here. <laughs> Would help if I was a car guy. Okay. Yeah, when in doubt, find more reference. Okay, so there's two panels that jut out like that. One thing that's important too is to take breaks. I can feel myself getting tired here. So I'm probably gonna cut the session off before I make too many mistakes. So I'm gonna leave that section for now and kind of come back to it and kind of continue to work on working out these sections. And then as that happens, that tends to become clear what you should do if you ever get mixed up in a spot. So I'm just gonna hold on that for a minute. And keep working to fill in this hexagonal tail light. Oops. V and then merge. Just constantly checking all my angles here. Trying really hard not to get too complacent with one point of view. Again, every time I extrude, I always just make really sure to be in that that world mode. It's hard to hard to overemphasize that. And so I'm extruding and then just checking it from different angles and then dragging vertices. And I'm feeling very unsure about that panel right now, so I'm just going to delete it. Um, I'm going to delete this too. I think I just ran into some issues there, and so I'm just going to I'm going to just delete out those faces and then find a moment where it makes more sense to me and strike when the, the iron's hot there, you know? So one technique I haven't shown but yet is it's called the bridge technique. So it's a lot like that um, merging vertices. So if I just shift and click both of these edges, and this is going to be the last thing I show for the step of the process, is I'm just going to hold down shift and grab both of these vertices, and then if I press bridge, It'll kind of create a new face right here that, that bridges the two of them. So that can be a really, really helpful tool a lot of times too. So you can fill in gaps and kind of fix things up that way. And so you're kind of seeing the process here. And again, remember that we're only having to do one side of the car here. And this is a pretty comp, I mean, I kind of purposefully picked the most complicated car I could find. Um, and so just keep that in mind that, you know, um, this is, you know, a difficult model that's being demonstrated right now. Um, and that, you know, depending on the car, it can go much faster here. And um, one thing also to keep in mind is this looks boxy right now, but keep in mind we're going to fill this in, adding more edge loops into the model. You can also press, so we're in one mode right now. If we press three, you can get a preview of what it looks like smooth. So you can absolutely model this way to model something like a Volkswagen Beetle or something like that that's heavily rounded. Just because it looks edgy here in this mode, just remember that the smooth button is really going to smooth things out depending on how much geometry you add. The more geometry you add, the harder the edges will be um, typically. So just pressing one again there. All right, so I'm going to cut this tutorial off, but in, um, if I were to continue this tutorial here, I keep just modeling this way, and I might pick this back up here at some point. Um, but just using the same techniques over and over again, where I'm just extruding an edge, um, placing the vertices, checking both this, you know, a side view, and checking a front view, and sometimes checking the top view, depending on which part of the car I'm on. As I get to the hood, 
the top section will, will become much more important, particularly up here and in this section right here. So, um, and then finally, after each one, I just kind of check it in the perspective mode and just use my eyes and my instincts of, you know, is this, of, is this looking okay? Um, all right, so until next time.